Something just happened out there, and it broke every law of motion we know. Iatlas, the mysterious interstellar object that entered our solar system months ago, was supposed to be on a fixed path. A clean exit trajectory. Nothing unusual. Until last night. Without warning, every telescope tracking it picked up a sudden anomaly. The object didn't slow down or speed up. It changed direction. Smoothly. Silently. With precision that no comet or rock could ever achieve. At first, the data was dismissed as a calibration error. Observatories recalibrated, re-ran the coordinates, checked the feed from multiple satellites, and yet the numbers matched. The object wasn't drifting anymore. It was steering. That's when the panic started spreading across control rooms. Every simulation, every gravitational model, every known natural explanation failed instantly. Because nothing that isn't alive or intelligently guided can do what 3i Atlas just did. It didn't react to the sun's pull. It didn't break apart from heat or tidal stress. It simply turned and locked onto a new vector heading deeper into the inner solar system. For years, astronomers argued whether interstellar visitors like Oumuamua or Borisov were mere rocks or something else entirely. But this time, there's no debate. The data is clear. The course change is real. And it's intentional. The strangest part, the shift happened at the exact same moment another anomaly appeared. A brief, low-frequency signal detected by the Swan Observatory. Too faint to decode, too deliberate to ignore. It's as if something out there is communicating. Or warning, whatever is guiding 3i Atlas isn't random. It's following a pattern, one that's leading it closer to the inner planets. Closer to us. Now scientists are forced to ask the question no one ever thought possible. If comets don't steer themselves, and space doesn't bend for the impossible, then what or who just took control of 3i Atlas? For months, everyone thought 3i Atlas was harmless. Just another interstellar traveler passing through, a dusty relic from another star. But buried inside those early readings was something we completely overlooked. When it first entered our system, its light curve didn't match any known pattern. It wasn't reflecting sunlight like a normal comet should. Its surface albedo, the measure of its brightness, fluctuated in precise intervals. Almost rhythmic, almost intentional, but no one wanted to believe that. The data teams wrote it off as instrument noise. Cosmic interference. Random chance. Because if those fluctuations weren't random, it meant something else. Something far more unsettling. Weeks passed. Then the energy reading started to change. A faint spike in radiation pressure. A slight drift in trajectory. Again dismissed. Nothing to panic about. But what no one noticed back then was that the object wasn't reacting to solar radiation. It was using it. Recent data confirms it. 3 I Atlas adjusted its angle, exactly in sync with incoming light from the sun, as if it were optimizing itself, like it was aware. Now scientists are combing through the archives, frame by frame, searching for what we missed. Some are realizing this might not be a comet at all. It doesn't behave like ice or dust or rock. It's absorbing energy, storing it, and releasing microbursts of plasma from its surface. Controlled bursts, that's not natural physics. That's propulsion. And here's where the timeline gets darker. Three days before its course shift, a classified radio observatory in the southern hemisphere detected a distortion, a repeating low-frequency pulse coming from the same vector as 3i Atlas. It wasn't noise. It had structure, a rhythm. When decoded into waveform, the sequence revealed something chilling. The pulse wasn't random cosmic radiation. It resembled a pattern, almost like an echo, as if something else, something ahead of 3i Atlas, was responding to it. Suddenly, all the old data started making sense. The temperature spikes, the oscillating light curve, the course correction. Every error was part of the same hidden pattern. We didn't just miss a clue. We missed a warning. Because if 3i Atlas isn't moving on its own, then something or someone might be controlling it from somewhere out there. And that somewhere is getting closer every hour. When the new telemetry came in, every system froze. The first line of data showed a an impossible temperature spike, a rise of nearly one to two hundred degrees in under five minutes. Not from solar radiation, not from friction. The object was too far from the sun for that. It was heating itself from within. That alone broke every known model of how comets behave. But then came the second anomaly, the speed curve. Instead of slowing down as it moved through denser solar wind, 3i Atlas began to accelerate, not chaotically, precisely, as if following pre-calculated thrust bursts. 
the numbers didn't make sense. A 0.02% change in velocity may sound small, but across cosmic distances, that's the difference between drifting and aiming. And when astronomers plotted its new trajectory, a silence fell over the room. Because the curve didn't lead it out of the solar system, it led it inward, toward the orbital path of Earth. Still, nobody wanted to jump to conclusions, so they rechecked the data, ran simulations, fed it through NASA's Deep Space Network and ESA's optical trackers. Every line came back identical. The acceleration was real. The direction was deliberate. And here's where things get strange. As the heat signatures increased, a secondary energy field appeared, invisible to optical sensors, but captured by magnetometers. A low-frequency plasma halo, faint, controlled, pulsing in rhythm, almost like an engine or a heartbeat. But 3i Atlas isn't large enough to sustain fusion. It doesn't have the mass, the energy, or the chemistry. So how is it doing this? Some researchers suggested it might be interacting with dark matter, converting unseen energy into motion. Others think it's something even stranger, a self-correcting system adapting to its surroundings. A machine wearing the disguise of a comet. Then, just as the data peaked, everything cut off. Telemetry dropped. Instruments crashed. The deep space feed went dark for exactly 11 minutes. When the systems came back online, the object was gone. Its signal completely blanked. But two minutes later, something new appeared on the sensors. A second heat source, moving in parallel with 3 Eye Atlas. Smaller, but matching its every move. And that's when one scientist whispered what everyone else was thinking, but too afraid to say, what if it's not alone? Inside Mission Control, the silence was louder than the alarms. Every screen was flashing red. Data feeds looping. Sensors losing lock. The live telemetry collapsing one line at a time. The people who'd been tracking 3 Eye Atlas for months suddenly had no idea what they were looking at anymore. For the first time in years, veteran scientists couldn't explain what they were seeing. The object wasn't behaving like a comet or a probe or even a piece of debris. It was responding. Every time they tried to predict its movement, it changed direction, almost as if it knew it was being watched. The panic started subtly. First the murmurs, then the shouting. Half the analysts demanded they release the data to the public. The other half insisted it be locked down. Because if word got out that something inside our solar system was actively steering itself, chaos would follow. Then in the middle of the confusion, the AI monitoring system displayed a warning none of them had ever seen before. Object classification, non-natural motion detected. The room went dead silent. Someone whispered, non-natural? What does that even mean? And before anyone could answer, the power flickered. The backup generators hummed. The screens blinked out and came back. But something was different. The tracking software had changed coordinates on its own. A second signal was now visible. Smaller, closer, whatever 3 I Atlas was. It wasn't alone anymore. The head of operations tried to stay calm, but the tension in the room was unbearable. Every new reading brought another contradiction. Energy spikes that didn't exist seconds before. A radiation trail that seemed to pulse back toward the source instead of away from it. It was as if the object was scanning us, watching our reactions. By the end of the hour, one scientist quietly removed his headset, leaned back, and said the words that everyone was afraid to admit. This isn't a comet anymore. It's a message. But a message from who? And why now? That question never got an answer because at that exact moment, every global observatory received a simultaneous alert. The Rei Atlas had just entered alignment with another anomaly, one that had been hiding in plain sight for months. Its name, Swan. Swan was supposed to be just another solar observation object, a faint, icy body moving near the heliospheric boundary. Quiet, stable, and completely unrelated to 3 I Atlas, until now, when the new data overlaid their trajectories, something impossible appeared on screen. The two weren't moving randomly. They were converging on a single point in space. A perfect intercept path near the orbit of Venus. Even stranger, both objects were releasing identical frequency pulses, 11.23 seconds apart. Not radio, not natural plasma bursts. Structured, encoded. For weeks, those signals had been dismissed as background interference. But now the pattern was undeniable. 3 I Atlas wasn't wandering through space. It was communicating. And Swan was answering. Astronomers across agencies were forced into emergency coordination. No one wanted to say it aloud, but the data suggested interaction. Two bodies exchanging information across tens of millions of kilometers. The realization
civilization hit like a thunderclap. Something was trying to synchronize them. In the, the control moment, room's they voices frequency. rose again. Everything could Arguments change. Arguments over what to do next. Should they jam the signal? Observe it? Destroy one before contact occurred? But the truth was brutal. Humanity had no control here. These weren't satellites. They weren't probes. Whatever they were, they were operating on a scale beyond human reach. Then, a new update rolled in from the deep space observatories. The region between Swan and Three-Eye Atlas had begun to distort. Light bending, magnetism fluctuating, a faint lensing effect, like space itself was reacting. Something was forming between them. It wasn't just communication anymore. It was construction. And yet, the world outside had no idea. News outlets still ran harmless comet updates, while behind closed doors, some of the brightest minds on Earth whispered a terrifying possibility. These objects aren't visitors. They're parts of something larger, something that's assembling itself right now, piece by piece, inside our solar system. And if that's true, then every second we spend watching them could be one second closer to whatever comes next. The closer three eye Atlas and Swan moved toward each other, the stranger the universe became. At first, the distortion field between them looked like a simple gravitational lens, a trick of light caused by massive objects. But this wasn't light bending from gravity. It was space itself rippling, as if reality were struggling to contain whatever force was building between the two. The instruments measuring the area started to fail one by one. Lasers aimed through the region came back scattered. Radio waves bounced unpredictably. Even the magnetic fields in nearby space probes began to fluctuate, like they were being rewritten. Then the readings came through, a localized spike in gravitational amplitude. Something inside that distortion was pulling matter toward it, but not evenly. It was selective, precise. It was choosing what to absorb. Within hours, fragments of debris around Swan vanished. Microscopic dust, solar particles, even fragments of cosmic radiation simply blinked out of detection. No explosion, no disintegration, just gone. That's when the fear really set in. Because if this force could erase matter at a distance, what would happen when the two objects finally met? The predicted impact point was now less than a week away. Every calculation confirmed the same horrifying result. The two paths would converge perfectly. No miss, no margin of error. Some scientists believed it could trigger a chain reaction, a ripple that might distort the very space-time around the sun. Others feared something worse, that this collision wasn't a collision at all, but an activation, and as the world's space agents prepared emergency monitoring systems, an unexpected message leaked, an encrypted log from within one of the deep space networks. It claimed that a brief transmission had been detected inside the distortion zone. Three short bursts, then a long tone, then silence. It wasn't random. It wasn't background noise. It was a pattern, and when decoded into a visual spectrogram, it formed something unmistakable, a shape resembling the orbit of Earth. That's when one analyst whispered, they're not colliding, they're aligning. In that moment, everything changed. The fear wasn't just about what might happen out there, it was what could already be happening here, because whatever was forming between Three Eye Atlas and Swan wasn't meant to destroy each other. It was meant to open something. The countdown to convergence reached zero, and then nothing, no explosion, no blinding light, no visible collision between Three Eye Atlas and Swan. For nearly six hours, every observatory reported the same thing, a blank patch of sky. No signals, no heat, no motion. It was as if both objects had simply vanished. But then the silence broke. At precisely 0211 UTC, the deep space network captured a single narrow band signal, originating not from the point of disappearance, but from inside Earth's orbital radius. At first, it sounded like static. Then the tone shifted, pulsing in intervals identical to the 1123 second rhythm both objects had shared. It it wasn't coming toward us. It was broadcasting around us, like a field expanding across space. When scientists decoded the signal, what they found sent chills through every control room on the planet. The data stream contained coordinates, not of a location in deep space, but one just beyond our atmosphere, high orbit. Near the shadowed side of Earth, the realization hit instantly. Whatever had formed between Swan and Three-Eye Atlas wasn't gone. It had moved. Infrared sensors picked up a faint
faint circular anomaly, cold, metallic, structured, roughly the size of a small asteroid, but far too symmetrical to be natural. And then, for exactly 3.2 seconds, it emitted a second transmission, this time in a frequency range no human device should ever use, 1420 mirrorists, the hydrogen line, the universal calling card of intelligent life. No one could decipher it. No one dared to respond, but every instrument that recorded that burst showed one terrifying detail. It wasn't just a signal. It was a map, and the end point of that map was Earth. Within hours, the anomaly vanished again. No trace, no light, no trail. Governments went silent. The network stopped releasing data, but a handful of independent astronomers claimed to have seen something, a faint shadow crossing the stars near lunar orbit, something vast, something waiting. Maybe Three Eye Atlas and Swan weren't enemies. Maybe they were never meant to reach us at all. Maybe their purpose was to deliver something else. And if that's true, then whatever came through that opening is already here.